So. Hello, dear friends. Thank you very much for joining in. Today we have an interview with Brother Ruben. And hello. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, if you can please share with me and with our friends your testimony and what God put on your heart. Yeah, for sure. So um, my life started or my walk with the Lord started um, back in... Um, let's say like 2014, 2013, and that's when I moved from the small town where I was living next to Canada, and I moved to Vancouver, Washington to go to culinary school, and meanwhile, while I was attending culinary school, I was going to a local church here, and, and that's where I met my wife. But before I met my wife, I was dealing with a lot of different issues. Um, number one, I was drinking, um, like pretty much like every day. You know, it was sometimes from the morning to the night, um, sometimes during the day, um, and it was it was a big problem. It was a really big problem, and and at the and at the same time, I was also dealing with um, if you ever heard probably about a like disorder like an eating disorder called like bulimia mm -hmm. where you eat, up and stuff. you eat a lot of food and you throw up um, and that was another thing that I was dealing with and then at the same time it was uh, I was taking different I guess like laxatives to like when I was eating a lot of food um, I, it would it would pretty much just you know clean me out but the reason I was doing that was because as a younger kid, I was a little bit, you know, on the chubbier side and I got made fun of and stuff like that. And it kind of like affected me and I was very self-conscious of my weight and um, how I looked and stuff. And so <clears throat> I was dealing with all of this stuff um, and nobody knew about it. Like there was, there was not even one person that knew that I was going, you know, like doing all this. Um, and so... When I met my wife, uh, she had a huge impact on me. Like, like when I fell in love with her, I, I don't know, I don't remember exactly like when was the moment, but like when, when, I, when I really started like, you know, fell in love with her, the drinking just like boom, like overnight gone. Like it was just one day I was drinking, next day I'm done. And it's been already like seven to eight years that, that no, you know, I haven't drunk. And that was just like supernatural, you know. Um, but then as, you know, our relationship started, you know, getting deeper and, um, I, you know, I was thinking like, you know, I'm going to have to tell her of like what I'm dealing with, you know, the other stuff that I was dealing with. And there, there was one night where I was like, I got to tell her, you know, I got to tell her everything. And so uh, when I told her, about this, you know, all these eating disorders and everything that I was going through, she just, she was shocked. She didn't know what to say. Um, I didn't know what else to say. And so we just, you know, I just left home and I was driving home and um, I was just crying and I'm like, that's it, God. You know, like the one thing that like, you know, inspired me to change in life is gone. Like I'm done, you know, um, like I didn't know what else, like, what else would happen next in life? Like maybe I would go back to the, you know, bad habits and stuff. But then the next day we started talking and over the phone and she said, you know what, you know, whatever you're going through, I'm going to love you and I'm going to continue praying for you. And that just like, it just, you know, blew me away because I've had, I've never had anybody tell me that, you know? And so from that point on, we, you know, we, continued to have a relationship and one day while I was away for work I was working and I had like this thought come to my mind like maybe I should just try to stop like doing what I'm doing you know stop taking these laxatives stop like you know throwing up and stuff and see what happens but the reason that I was um, so afraid to like stop was because I didn't know what would happen with my body because this mm -hmm. was like over like a couple of years I was doing all these things you know so you know you cause a lot of harm to your body by doing all that and <clears throat> and then just like one day I was like I'm just gonna stop and see what happens and 
even like before I did this, you know, I, I did some research and stuff online, which probably wasn't a good idea, but I did some research and there was like people like literally dying from this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just like, for example, if you just like bulimic just by itself, you can die from that, you know? But I was like drinking bulimic and laxatives at the same time, you know? And, um, and so I just stopped and, you know, a couple of, for like a couple of days, there was like, you know, no, like nothing going on. You know what I mean? Like, um, and then after that, it just like, you know, everything was like working like properly, like it should, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then I started to like research and I feel like the Lord had a huge, like, you know, leading in this, but I started like, um, doing a lot of research and just kind of like about like healthy eating and like I don't have to like harm my body to like stay healthy and you know what I mean mm -hmm. and so like after that it was, it's just been it's been uh, uh, you know God really like blessed me with a lot of like information and like a lot of um, like what I should eat what I shouldn't eat that I don't have to like you know hurt my body by you know by by like doing all these different bad habits, you know what I mean? Like there's other ways that you can, you know, s not gain weight and stay healthy by not like, d uh, you know, causing harm to your body. And I feel like my wife, she did, she just, she was a, hu God used her like big time in my life to, to, you know, to pray for me and to be there for me and to just, you know, be that support for me. And uh, my greatest encouragement is like, you know, if you know somebody who's going through something, um, you know, oftentimes we feel like prayer like is not strong enough, but prayer is powerful and it can it can change lives. You know, it can free people from different chains and addictions. And, you know, don't don't stop praying for people, you know. Amen. Yeah. Um, Ruben, I have a question. You know, I've heard I thought that um, bulimic people are mainly girls because they always like look at the magazines and they want to be skinny and looking good. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times I've heard before also that uh, women, they don't tell others that they're going through that problem. They're just kind of stuck in that situation. Um, is there something you can advise them like by prayer or eating healthy, whatever is your advice to people like that? Yeah, my advice would be, you know, um, even like tell, tell like a close friend or, or, or somebody that you trust, you know, tell them about your issue. Because the Bible says that when two people come in agreement with prayer, then um, I don't I don't remember that verse exactly, but you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Where uh, where two, two or three are gathered. Yeah, two or three are gathered in my name. There I will be with them. That's one of them. But there's another verse where it says um, where it talks about when like two people pray, then uh, anything is possible. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like things will happen. I'm sorry, I don't remember that verse right now. But come in an agreement. Come in an agreement with somebody. You know, come in an agreement in prayer and like, Lord, we're gonna we're gonna, you know, we're gonna tackle this problem, you know, and uh, that's you know and the biggest thing for me is to also um, don't be afraid to like, you know, like stop doing it. Like, you know, don't be afraid to uh, like God, uh, what I'm trying to say is like, don't be afraid to to stop doing it because like I was afraid to stop doing it because I was afraid of like all the damage that I've done on my body. But God is supernatural and he can he can help you go through this issue and he can help you stop and he can help you. You know, if you if there's any problems that you've caused in your body, he can heal you, you know. And for me, God helped show not just like healed me but he also kind of set me on a path to eating right and and showed me that you don't have to, that I don't have to do this to um to stay healthy and to stay skinny mm -hmm. you know um one thing i forgot to mention was after i i stopped doing all this um or after i decided that i'm going to stop i went and got a blood test done to see if like there was, you know, something I caused internal damage, like some sort of internal damage that I may have caused and stuff. And I went and got like a blood test done to see, you know, if there was any damage. And the blood test came back and everything was like 
good. Your like gone. there was, I think I lacked like maybe like a little bit of a vitamin or something, but that was the, that was it. Like everything, like for a couple of years doing that, and then everything is good. Is like that's supernatural. You know, God really did a miracle. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you are dealing with this, there there is freedom. You know, there is freedom from this, and I can tell you personally that God can set you free from this. Um, if you know. Find a friend, find somebody that you trust, tell them about it. Um, somebody that's not going to, you know, that you know for sure, that's not going to, like, condemn you or put you down because of this. Um, you know, even just somebody in your local church or anybody that, you know, ask God. If you don't have anybody, ask God, like, Lord, send somebody in my life to help me with this. And he will. I, I believe that he will. You know, I wasn't even praying for him to send me someone, and he sent me, you know, my future wife, um, and and she helped me. So praise God. I have another question. Yeah. Let's say someone is watching us, and uh, they go to church, and uh, but they still have the drinking problem. Like some people that I know of, uh, they feel lonely. Um, they kind of like isolate themselves, and they start drinking. Um, is there any advice you can give? Let's say they don't have that someone who can pray for them. Uh, any other advice is how God can set them free. So. I, I believe, you know, um, a lot of the times people start drinking is because of, like, friends, you know. A lot of times it's, you know, other, other friends. You're, you're in a setting, you know, at a, you know, just some guys getting together or whatever it may be, a party, and there's drinking there. And, you know, you, they may come to that place thinking that, um, oh, I'm not going to drink. You know, um, like it's, you know, it doesn't affect me. It's not going to affect me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I, I come from a good Christian home. But um, the Bible also teaches us that when you hang out with people with bad habits, you're going to eventually, you know, take on those bad habits. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, if you know that there's going to be drinking there, if you know that there's going to be, um, you know, friends that, are, that have a bad influence on you, don't go, you know, just don't go and, you know, find a local church, ask God to show you a local church to be a part of. And usually those local churches, they have, you know, a life group or they have a youth group or they have, um, you know, a, a prayer or something and do your best to like try to go to every single one of those and develop like good Christian friends that will have a positive impact on you. And they're, they're not going to, you know, lead you to. Uh, doing something that's going to cause a lot of destruction in your life. True. I agree totally with you. Yeah. Ruben, I have another question. I always watch you and you're like so on fire for God, like you pray. Um, can you give an advice for people that want that fire back, that they're kind of like in church for a while and then they feel very cold inside and they want the fire of God back? Well, <clears throat> You, you know, many people probably already heard this before, and I don't, but for me personally, um, is just do your very best to cut out anything that is not from the Lord in your life, you know, whether it may be music, mm -hmm. movies, um, you know, I'm, I'm just sharing from my, you know, personal experience, what helps me is I try to replace, you know, I tried to, I tried to, in, like, so for example, I heard, a, I heard a, an example kind of like recently is if you take a cup and it has dirty water in it, mm -hmm. one way or what is the way to remove that dirty water is you fill it up with clean water until it starts overflowing with clean water. And that's the way I see, like, you know, how to live life on fire for the Lord is, is you just keep filling yourself up, filling yourself up with, you know, Number one, the Bible. Um, you know, a lot of people, they, can, they think that you can grow in the Lord by just listening to sermons all the time. You know, um, that's great. I've been there. But you're chewing something that somebody already chewed. You're not eating the real food yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So fill yourself with the Word of God. Fill yourself, you know, 
I, I even forced myself to, I downloaded the Bible on my iPhone. So even if I'm in a bad service or something like that, and instead of, you know, surfing the net or surfing the web or, you know, whatever, I'll just turn on the Bible. I have AirPods and I'll just turn on the Bible and I'll, you know, throughout my day, I'll be listening to the Bible. I'll be listening to worship music, you know, um, and it's just constantly coming into me, you know, and that's, and I, and I, and that's like, that, that's, uh, that's huge for me because I know that the Word of God is powerful, it's alive, and it's doing something in me even though I don't feel like it is, you know? Because it's not about feelings, but it's by faith. And I know that, you know, somewhere down the line, this, the Word of God that I'm putting into me is going to come in hand. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, bring a fruit in its time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was actually talking to someone today in the morning and we were saying that, yes, sermons are important and I love listening to sermons. But when you read the Bible, like a lot of times God answers you and yeah. your answer is like clear as day. You're like, wow, this is the answer for me. Wow. Yeah. And you're like so surprised and there's no confusion or anything like that because God is alive and he answers through his word. Amen. Uh, Amen. Ruben, I have another question yeah. for you. So, you know, right now, a lot of people are into Instagram. I love Instagram, too. But there's this fake, um, like a lot of families have issues. But on the Instagram, it's so beautiful, fancy pictures. Um, can you speak, like, let's say, if there are families that are having issues or husbands did something that they were not supposed to do, how to encourage them to have that love towards their family back, how to like reignite the family to b make them unite again, bring maybe love back if their spouses, they're kind of not, not feeling it anymore. Um, so after I met my wife and we got married, that wasn't, you know, I had like, happily ever after I don't fireworks yeah it's it's not that you know i'll just be honest with you marriage is amazing but it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of um humility humility you know um but i believe that the husband since he is the head of the household he sets the example of how things are going to be in the family and um you know the husband he needs to show uh, what you know what a what a godly person is supposed to be like in the family and then the kids are gonna look up to him the wife is gonna look to him and they're gonna follow him you know that's why you know in Russian language it says za mujum you know she's gonna go after the after the husband but um, yeah so for us it, for me and my wife even like before we got married what I already shared earlier, we went through, you know, a bunch of things. But then after marriage, you know, there was a lot of mistakes done as well. But again, time after time, the Lord used my wife to, you know, um, if she wanted to, she could have probably left me so many times. You know what I mean? She, she had the, the right to because, you know, I was perfect. I came from, you know, um, a, a really different background than what she came from, you know. Her, her family was more, her family is more on the calm side and nice and, you know, but my side is a little bit more rough. But, um, and she, she just, she stuck through, she stuck through it with me, you know, she, she, she prayed for me, she, um, and she just loved me, you know, um, and I just look back right now and it's just, it's, it's just the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God just flowing through her to me. Um, and what, what was your question? I'm sorry. Just like how to bring love back if yeah. there are misunderstandings in the family because in any family there is some troubles going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. so despite of what social media shows of how perfect families are, they're not perfect. You know, I'll be honest, they're not perfect. Every single family, there's, there's some sort of, you know, um, because we, we're all people, we're all, you know, we're not perfect. We all come from different areas of life. We all come from different families. We all grew up different. And there's not ever going to be a perfect marriage. There's not ever going to be a perfect, you know, family. But that's why we have the Lord. You know, that's why we have Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, 
where we are able to forgive each other, we're able to love each other and look past you know, different weaknesses, different mistakes. Um, but I believe that the number one thing would be to, you know, if you are doing something that's um, you know, causing harm to your family and nobody knows about it, or if you already did, but there's still like that remembrance about it and like, you know, you still kinda like feel like it wasn't worked out completely, you know? It's kind of like like a kind of like a brick wall, you know what I mean? That there's like those bricks stacked up in between your relationship with your wife. I feel like you, you just have to man up and just be like, you know what, honey, you know, whatever, you know, sweetheart, I'm sorry. I messed up, you know, I screwed up, but you know, please pray for me and you know, I'm going to try to, um, you know, with the Lord's help, get better, you know. And I feel like once you, you know, God gives grace to the humble. And so he's going to grace you too. When, when, a, when a husband or when a wife, you know, made a mistake or um, maybe they're currently in a sin that, you know, that, uh, that neither one of them knows about or something, and it's causing harm to the family, you know, there's... there's like, there's not that love that used to be, that honeymoon love, you know. Um, you just repent, you know, just repent before God and like, Lord, look, I'm struggling with this. Please help me, you know. But that doesn't just stop, you know. It's not a one-time thing, you know, because the um, Bible says to choose life, you know. So, yes, you, you may, you, you know, you can humble yourself and you can ask for forgiveness. And that's needed and you need to do that. Um, but choose life, you know, like, for example, if, if you know that there is a prayer somewhere, if you know that, you know, there's a, a, like a gathering of believers somewhere, like a church service or something, you know, and you choose to stay at home and watch TV instead, or you choose to stay at home and watch a movie instead, well, you're not really, like, making an effort, you're not really, you know, putting in an effort to, for that marriage, for that family to change, you know. Go to the presence of God. Run to the presence of God and ask the Lord, Holy Spirit, I'm, you know, I'm dealing with this issue. Or, um, Holy Spirit, give me, you know, make, make my marriage the way that you want it to be, you know. I, I want to love my wife the way that you want me to love her. I want to love my children the way that you want me to love them, you know. And the Holy Spirit and the presence of God is going to be there and it's going to change you and it's going to help you. You know, because when we try to do things on our own strength, we're going to fail. We're going to get frustrated. We're going to, and, and, and nothing's going to happen. It's just, you know, it's going to get worse. But if you, if we humble ourselves, we humble ourselves before our spouse, before our family, um, whoever maybe, you know, whoever we may have caused harm to, and just, you know, apologize sincerely, and then ask the Lord for his help, for his grace, for his presence, for, for the Holy Spirit to come into, you know, your heart to change you. Um, I feel like that's where it's at. And I'm, I'm learning that, you know, I'm, this is, I'm, you know, I'm not perfect, you know, and I'm, I'm learning that myself that, you know, God, you know, I need you because I realize that no matter, you know, you can listen to all the marriage counseling, you can listen to all the marriage sermons, but if you don't personally make that step, you know, you, uh, that, that personal step with the Lord and just ask Him for His help. He wants to help. He, he's there for us, you mm -hmm. know. He's waiting. He wants us. He wants to help us. He wants to bless our marriage. But we need to make that decision personally. We need to choose life every day, you know, and just be in His presence. I also wanted to add to that that please do not compare your family to other families because I've heard that some families are so fancy on Instagram, but they're honestly going through a divorce and you don't, you don't even have any idea yeah. about that. So don't compare because in each family there's some kind of kindness, some kind of love that is inside of your family. So don't compare and say, oh, this husband is better, this wife is better, and so and so. And in general as well, it's just very harmful when we start comparing each other to each other. Um, thank you so much. May God bless you so much. Thank you. Um, we yes. always do, every time we do an interview, in the end of the interview, we ask uh, a person to share about Jesus because what if there's someone watching us first time and they, they've never heard about Jesus Christ if you can share the gospel and pray for people like that absolutely 
So if you're watching out there and you're dealing with a certain situation, um, I don't know what it may be. Uh, you know, maybe you um, went through a car accident. Maybe you you had a divorce. Maybe you're going through a divorce. Maybe you're having issues with your children. You can't connect with them. Um, maybe um, you know you're having family problems. Whatever it may be, whatever it may be. There is, there is grace and freedom available for you. There is the presence of God, the peace of God available for you. And God can fix your situation. He can turn it around. And then you can be a testimony to others of what God did in your life. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your life, if you can please close your eyes and just say, Father God, I need you and I've realized I've been missing out of what you have for me. Please forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me of everything that I have done that is not of you. Cleanse me by the power of the Holy Spirit. Cleanse me with your blood and I accept you into my heart, Jesus Christ. And I want to live for you and I want you to use me not just change my family, not just turn every bad situation around in my life, but I want you, but I want to truly live for you. And I, and I want to do what you have called me to do. If you've accepted Jesus Christ in your heart today, I'm so happy for you. God has a wonderful plan for you. And stay faithful to him, regardless of what's going on around in the world, what's going on, you know, you may, have, you may be going through a bad situation, but stay faithful to Him. Feed on the Word of God. Let it come into you. Let it change you. Get filled up with the Word of God. And God will be faithful to you. He will bless you. And He will make you a blessing to others. Amen. May God bless you guys. God has a plan for your life. Never give up. We love you.